I was born in Damascus when my parents were working uh, in the United Nations, and my mother is Syrian, and my father is English. And you know, when I when I learned about our history in this country, my grandfather was in the Royal Air Force, they fought during World War II. Um, my great grandfather was in the British Army in the trenches and was wounded. And I know that in this country, when we were faced with the prospect of German invasion, we did every little thing imaginable to uh, to prepare a resistance, even changing street signs to confuse the Germans if they landed, uh, distributing weapons, creating an auxiliary force. And so to, to go and then demonize the Palestinians when they want to resist is, is utterly disgusting. Uh, not to mention the fact that we occupied them as well. The, the, the Israelis are not the first to occupy the Palestinians. We, we were there. Okay, Th this, this country occupied the Palestinians and, and butchered Palestinians. And ironically, when you look at uh, a lot of these Israelis, they actually butchered British soldiers. And in their minds, they thought that they were liberating their homeland. So anything goes. They can blow up the King David Hotel and kill, uh, which is one of the deadliest attacks against British citizens. They can uh, string up dead British soldiers and fill their bodies full of explosives as booby traps. This is what Zionists did. And they were not even from the region. They came from Eastern Europe. They came from Romania. They came from Hungary. They came from Poland. They came from Russia. And they thought that this is their land and that anything goes to, to kick the British out. But it's not their land. They're from Poland. They're from Hungary. They're from Russia. They're from the United States. They don't come from Europe. And as a matter of fact, they don't come from Palestine. They come from Europe. And as a matter of fact, they changed their names. Netanyahu's name is not Netanyahu. It's Mylikovsky. Every single Israeli prime minister changed their last name to sound more Jewish and more Middle Eastern because they're phonies. They're fakes. They're pretenders. They're trying so hard to make you believe that this land belongs to them. And, and if they make you believe that, then anything goes. They can kill a Palestinian. They can kill a British soldier. They can kill a British civil servant. Anything goes. And as a matter of fact, when we talk about terrorism, who planted bombs in London? Do Hamas come here and plant bombs? Do, do they plant bombs around this country? Uh, do the Yemenis come to England and attack us even though we are uh, bombing them in their home country and we're, we are selling weapons to the Saudis to bomb them uh, or giving uh, weapons to the Israelis to bomb them? Never. They, they ironically stay confined to their borders. It's the Israelis who came and put bombs around London. It's the Israelis who planted bombs under government buildings in this country. I want you to remember that. Zionists are the only ones, not Arabs, who planted bombs in pubs in government buildings and who attacked and targeted and assassinated British civil servants, and, uh, civil servants and soldiers in this country. So when we talk about a history of terrorism, the Israelis invented modern terrorism. This is an absolute fact. They assassinated Swedish diplomats who tried to, uh, you know, uh, soften things between Palestinians and, and, and the British when they were trying to create a, an, an Israeli state. So any, anyone who got in their way, even uh, foreign diplomats, they would go and assassinate them, roll up to the car, even a UN car, and just put a gun inside and shoot the people. They, they, they are thuggish in, the, in, their, in their manner. They, they behave like, like street criminals, like, like, like gangsters, you know, like the mafia in Chicago in the 1920s. That this is who we are talking about. So when we look at the Israeli forces today, they have continued in this manner the entire time. So they, they bring with them this, this uh, thuggish, violent behavior, and, and that explains also why they behave like this. So when you give them uh, you know, 2,000 pound bombs, they're going to use the 2,000 pound bombs. But then that's when we come in. We have a moral imperative to stop uh, arming the Israelis. No matter what your background is, you're a Christian, how can you call yourself a Christian and then uh, support this kind of behavior? Jesus tells you to go and bomb people in, the, in their houses and steal their houses. Does Muhammad tell you to do that? Does Moses tell you to do that? Every single thing about the Israelis runs counter to these three religions. Every single thing about their behavior. They have nothing to do with Judaism. As a matter of fact, if we look at who has a closer relationship to Moses and Abraham, like because they say this is their land because they're Jewish. Ironically, it's the Palestinians. Palestinians, their DNA is Semitic. They are real, proper Semites. Someone who comes from Russia is not a Semite. They're an Ashkenazi, white European Jew. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you can't come from Russia and then say you're from Palestine. That doesn't make any sense. So when, we, when you look at the Israelis, they ban DNA tests. DNA tests are forbidden for a reason, because they don't want their mystique, their, their uh, giant mythology to crumble. So they don't allow themselves uh, to, to expose themselves to the whole world and, and, and also internally. And so the Israelis want you to believe that. We have to destroy 
the entire Zionist narrative from A to Z, every single little thing about them has to be unraveled because they profit off of this, they murder off of this. They use our support, our political and media coverage, and, and, and also the weapons and, and, and all the support that we offer them diplomatically. They use all of this, they accumulate it and use that to murder and persecute Palestinians. So we have to unravel and destroy it wherever we find it. The Israelis are not Semites. They're not Semites. Netanyahu is Polish. I'm sorry, you can't be from Poland and then claim you're from Palestine. You just can't. Uh, the, the ones that are closest and most closely related to the original Jews that they, they constantly talk about who lived in the region 3,000, 2,000 years ago are the Palestinians that they are killing today. So, so when you murder 30,000 or 30, now the figure is 37,000 if you can believe that. When you murder 37,000 Palestinians, you are an anti-Semite. You're the one who is murdering Semites. And, and again, even you don't have to be Jewish to be a Semite. If you look at the definition of a Semite in a dictionary, in any dictionary, it tells you this includes Semitic people who speak Semitic languages, meaning Arabs as well. Arabic is a Semitic language. It comes from Aramaic. So you, the Palestinians are 100% Semites. They, this land belongs to them. And you cannot call yourself a, a religious person and then support this. You cannot call yourself a historically literate person and support this behavior. You cannot allow yourself and your government to be complicit in this kind of stuff. We have to resist. So my message to you is stand up and resist. Whether you are debunking Zionist propaganda, that's a form of resistance. Whether you're educating yourself, that's a form of resistance. Whether you're talking to your neighbor, to your colleague, to a family member who, who happens to be stubborn, that's a form of resistance. And we have to stop demonizing the resistance of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I'm sorry, when, when a bunch of thugs in uniform march into your house and start blindfolding you, you have a right to pick up a Kalashnikov and fire at them. Americans say that if you come into their property, they can blast you away with a shotgun in some states. But a Palestinian can't do that when an American goes into the house. What is this nonsense? What is this nonsense? You have a right to defend your house in Palestine. You, it, it is outrageous for us in this country to then point fingers at Palestinians who we brutalize, whose brutalization we continue to support and then demonize them for resisting. Again, the real terrorists here are the Zionists. They are the ones who have attacked this country and who have attacked also the Palestinians themselves and are continuing to do that. Uh, the, the brothers also in Yemen who are resisting over there. You know, we put up a naval blockade against Nazi Germany uh, to cut their oil supply off. We, the Americans put up a, an, uh, an oil embargo against the Japanese as well. This is considered normal, right? Sanctions every single day against Russia, against you know, Iran. This is perfectly fine, but the Yemenis, they can't sanction Israelis. They can't sanction British and American ships who are passing right next to their waters. The, the Yemenis are not coming to the English Channel and blasting ships. They are saying, if you pass in front of us and you go to Palestine, we're going to stop you. Fair is fair. So, you know, we can't say that they violate international law while we're the, the number one violators of international law. We don't care about international law. We gain the system. Even in the United Nations, the, the, the system is rigged. In the, in the United Nations, we have a permanent seat on the, on the uh, United Nations Security Council, which is, which is veto power, and it allows us to just, you know, uh, remove anything that, that doesn't uh, uh, support the Israelis. And ironically, even those resolutions like uh, UN Security Council Resolu Resolution 242, which says the Israelis have to leave the Syrian Golan Heights, they have to leave the West Bank, they have to leave all the territories that they invaded, never been implemented. To this day, since 1967, never been implemented. No one has violated more UN Security Council resolutions than the Israelis, and we help them violate those UN Security Council resolutions. And these are binding. You cannot look at a, a UN Security Council resolution and say, I don't want to apply it. It's legally binding. Otherwise, leave the UN. Why are you here? You, the Israelis spend all this time trying to block the Palestinians entering the UN, and, and, and they, they use all this political capital uh, to have the French and, and, and the Americans and this government support them against the Palestinians, and then they turn around and start murdering more UN staff members than anyone in history. Can you believe that? You know, my parents worked in the United Nations peacekeeping in Africa, uh, in Kashmir, in the Middle East. The, the stories they told me, no one fires on UN staff members except the Israelis. They, they themselves have witnessed and been subjected to these attacks in the field, in Lebanon, in Syria. And, to, and now you see in Gaza, no one has killed more UN staff members than the Israelis. They have such contempt for the United Nations. Just the other day, the Israeli ambassador to the UN records a conversation when he's being called to be told that the Israelis have been placed on a blacklist for people that 
kill and target children like ISIS, like like uh, 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 like Boko Haram. So the Israelis are outraged. Uh, they're outraged about this. What, but you can't film the conversation. Do you know the United Nations spokesperson was shocked afterwards? He said, "In my 24 years working in the UN, no one has ever filmed a meeting and then published it online." So you, you, the Israelis are breaking every single precedent imaginable, from you know murdering people in refugee tents to filming uh, meetings with diplomats. They they have no respect for any kind of, of, of concept of, of religion, of international law, of humanity, they, they do not care. They are criminals of the highest order. We have a moral imperative to resist them. You have to do whatever you can. You know, I, I really want to instill in you the, the importance of resistance because this is not just a moral thing. This is legally, legally backed up. The Geneva Convention is very clear. The, the United Nations General Assembly resolutions that have been passed are very clear. You have the right to resist someone who invades your country. This is not controversial. You, if someone invades you, you have the right to resist, period. And, and it's specific to the Palestinians as well. So we, we have to remember that, that uh, you know, just because we don't like some Hamas policies, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, why are we also talking about Hamas? This is a media trick that they use to kind of distract you because Hamas are not the only ones resisting in Gaza. You've got Palestinian Islamic Jihad, so that's with the Quds Brigades. Uh, you've got the Palestinian Resistance Committee. You've got the uh, uh, the uh, PFLP, right? So that's a, a, a Marxist, uh, a secular group for those who want to claim, oh, it's an Islamist uh, thing. Because that, that's how they want to get you. They want to, to kind of cloud your judgment and make you think that it's some religious thing. It, they just happen to hate Jews. It's complete nonsense. The resistance in Palestine is very pluralistic. You've got people who are doing it for religious reasons, for, for moral reasons, for, for all sorts of reasons. And, and, and they have all sorts of ideologies, economic uh, uh, goals and economic ambitions and political ambitions. It's, it's a very pluralistic one. It's actually one of the most outstanding resistance movements in the world anywhere today. There is nothing like it. So we have to understand that. We have to understand what we're talking about. We can't allow these scumbags in the mainstream media to, to you know, lie about something that is this important that we are involved in. We can't you know, live in Britain or, or, or be British and say we have no involvement in this. Everyone, everyone. Uh, has to understand that they are cons they they are involved in this. Even someone who comes from, let's say, Mexico, you're 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 concerned by this. You have to be because if the, if the Israelis get away with this behavior, they will come for others next. You might be next tomorrow, God forbid. So we we have to understand that this behavior is outrageous. And I and I will go so far as to say that this did not start on October seventh. It started way before. How many decades have, have the United States and Britain been in, invading Arab countries and, and murdering Arabs? It's happened in Libya, it's happened in Syria, it happened in Somalia, it happened in, in Afghanistan, uh, which is a, a you know, majority Muslim country, Iran also targeted with sanctions. And then, and then going back to, to Arab countries, you know, looking at also uh, the, the invasions of Iraq and, and the torture there with, with men in Abu Ghraib. I mean, you see that the treatment that Palestinians are subjected to, it's exactly like Abu Ghraib. You've got men who are being sexually abused. You have children that are being sexually abused by Israelis in prisons. I mean, outrageous. And then they want to tell you about, uh, you know, they want to uh, tell you that there was rape on October 7. They can't produce a shred of evidence about this. And, and then Hamas said, come and investigate. We want the whole world to come and investigate it. And then the Israelis say, no. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The, the, the ones that actually want the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice to come to Palestine are Hamas. It's not the Israelis. So you, you see who has contempt for international law and who is serious about international law. Um, and, and you have to understand also that if you, if you look at this from, from an outside perspective, let's say you know, you're looking at it from the perspective of China or Russia, where they're neither Muslim uh, nor Arab, they, they're not participating in the genocide or financing one side or something like that. They, they're looking at this behavior and seeing who is sane, who is behaving with moral clarity here. And, and they are leaving us in the dust. We, we have to understand that the world is changing right now. We, we are really living in revolutionary times. It's, it's actually unbelievable and, and very scary, uh, to, you know, to, to, to put it mildly. The, the world is changing. They are de-dollarizing. Uh, BRICS are moving away from the current banking system and the monetary system. And, and they are going to leave us in the dust because we behave, with, with, you know, we behave like this. We, we allow this to happen. We don't sever ties with the Israelis. We supply the Israelis. We produce weapons for them. It, this is really, really disgusting. Um, and, and, you know, the thing is, in, in Palestine, they make missiles out of sugar. They, have li they, they literally make their own weapons. And, that, and that's the difference between someone who is bent on resisting at any by any means necessary, at any cost, whereas he will make weapons for profit. 
You, you don't make weapons for profit. You make weapons to defend yourself, and that's it, period. Anything beyond that is, is, is grotesque. It's, 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 uh, it, it's, it's just simply greedy. So we have to understand that we are, sh we are destroying our own image. No, no matter what perspective you look at this from, uh, religious or humanitarian or political, you have to be involved, and you have to, you have to care about the Palestinians and their plight. And again, uh, this, is, this extends to the entire region. We, we, we have been forcing uh, countries uh, uh, to do our bidding in the region. Like, for example, Chris uh, raised the issue of this highway that was set up by Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they, they certainly benefit from it and, and the UAE, but we are also pushing them to do it and helping them to do it. So, you know, we, we are forcing and imposing ourselves on other countries. And this runs counter to thoughts of, uh, about independence and, and principles of uh, self-determination. So, you know, this is imperialist thinking. We, we cannot uh, impose ourselves and our, and our way of life and, uh, and our greed on others and corrupt them. Because that's what we're doing, essentially. We are corrupting Arabs to hurt other Arabs and, and or Muslims to hurt other Muslims. And, and that's a very, 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 very big problem. We, we can't have that. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I really want to instill in you the importance of resistance. I, I really want to do that because uh, civil disobedience, direct action, protesting, uh, all the way from, from, you know, handing out a leaflet to picking up a rifle, uh, all of this in these times, in these uh, uh, circumstances that are so extraordinary, they, they are necessary. And I'm not, I'm not telling you to go and pick up a, a Kalashnikov. I'm, I'm saying that you, you have to find your way in your community to resist and not demonize those that are, that are being bombed. Literally, they have buildings collapsing on top of them and demonizing them for then getting up and, and being mad at that and, and fighting back. And I'll just, uh, and I'll end with one last thing. You know, we say that there are 37,000 killed in, in, in Gaza. This is not true. No, no, this is not true. The Israelis purposely targeted the uh, healthcare system in Palestine and Gaza. It is literally impossible to count the, the number of dead. And as a matter of fact, Hamas are undercounting the dead to avoid being accused of inflating the numbers of, of overcounting. So the real number is probably between 100 to 200,000. And, and I'll put, I'll, let me put this to you. Let's say it was 10,000. Are you okay with killing 10,000 people? If you kill one person, you go to prison. Why is it okay to kill 10,000 people? This, this is deranged, sick behavior. So again, again I, I just want to you know, implore you to please, please resist. Please educate others. Uh, this is the best that we can do here.